Our electricity comes from the sun. Uh, we have three solar panels that work pretty well. So the solar system, while ours is relatively simple, is still pretty complex. There are lots of things that can go wrong. When you move off grid, one of the things you learn very quickly is that you use a lot more power than you think you do when you live on land. And the next thing you learn very quickly is that it's very difficult to repeat shore power systems on off-grid systems. One day, the batteries were reading low. I figured it was just because it was cloudy or something like that. Pro I thought initially the problem was the solar panels. It ended up turning out to be the controller itself. But the net result was that we were several days without solar power in the battery, and we essentially had to shut all the electrical systems in the boat down. The night the lights went out. <laughs> um, okay, it was not the first night the lights have gone out. They've gone out many times before because our, our electric system was not the soundest. We had this sort of moment of, oh my goodness, what are we going to do tonight? How are we going to get through? Mm. Amazing how much you rely on that stuff. And in the moments of having this, you know, sort of intensely frustrated and despairing conversation, uh, the papa and the boat, Captain Tom, went and got the layman's oil lamp that we have had for years and keep on board for, I suppose, instances like this one, and he lit it. It's a jar, oil, a wick, and a piece of metal. So it's a lot simpler than the extreme electric system. You can light it, and then it's on. When it breaks, which it doesn't actually break, but if there's a moment where it. the flame goes down and you wonder why, Mama can fix it. And then, when you want to get it out, you just pull it on it. When the cabin lights are working, like your average house in America, we have lights in every corner, we have lights in every room. So when the cabin lights were on, everybody just dispersed, scattered, and went to their own space to do their own thing. That day, there was nothing in the batteries, and so we were not only without our lights, but without everything. We couldn't, our devices were nearly dead, we couldn't charge them, so we had no cell phones, we had no computer, we had no lights, we had no appliances, we had nothing, everything was dead. They got out their drawing books and started drawing faces and wanted to learn how to draw faces, and so there was an impromptu drawing lesson from our resident art teacher. When we now share this single light, we have a shared evening and we all come together. If you want to read or you want to play music or you want to draw, the only place you can do that is around the very small circle of light that the candle throws off around the table. And so we all stay very close to one another. And so we're sharing our reading time, we're sharing our drawing time, our music making time in a way that we never did before the candle became the sort of centerpiece of our evenings. And now, when the day feels very frenetic, as days in our culture often do, I just think of the evening, and I feel restored, and I it calms me to think of spending the evening together around the oil lamp. We spent the evening in the dark, in the togetherness of that one small light, in the quiet, with nothing on, with nothing running, with no, no distractions. And it was utterly transformative. Like, we felt peace for the first time, maybe ever. 
And we remembered that one of the things we left in search of when we left the dock in this boat was a life in which we could feel poetry. And that night was one of the first nights that we could say, yeah, we can feel it again. We can feel it out here. We can feel it in this life. One of the things we came out here looking for was poetry. Um, after our first journey, we stopped for six months and, and put together Anna's first three books of poetry, two chapbooks and one full-length work. Um, we needed the boat to get to the poems, to be able to finish the manuscripts, to be able to turn them into what they needed to be. And it was a really refreshing that we should find the space again, the space for poetry, um, after the lights went out. I was looking through my second chapbook of poems called Leaf Scraps, stumbled on this poem called Aphorism for a New Dark Age, which goes, dilation occurs in diminishing light. And I thought, oh, we could rename it Ode to Our, can Ode to Our Lamp, Ode to Our Oil Lamp. Dilation occurs in diminishing light. That's kind of what happens in our evenings. So I've been thinking about this poem through this long, dark year that we've all just endured. It's called, I Have Faith in Being Strong, which is a line from the Peruvian poet Cesar Vallejo. I have faith in being strong. Tengo fe en ser fuerte. Tengo fe en ser fuerte. And if I say it like that in a different tongue, I can almost believe in being strong. Only, there's a fault line running through the tender earth, which shakes at times my delicate resolve, and things I trusted to be steady reveal a shaken worth. Of, he said, is a funny word, the way we take on faith its hidden sound. The scene and the known approximate imperfectly something less specific but more real. He feels it like a tremor only visible in water, and that's enough, or should be, to shake the heavens loose. <laughs> 